Hi everyone. Today I want to show you how do I start pretty much every artwork I do with Cinema 4D and Octane. Let's start from scratch. I like to start by making a plane. So up here, hold down the left click and choose plane. Make it big enough with more segments. The more segments you have, the more defined your terrain will be. So here let's put 400. Also, to see the segments, go to display and change it to hidden line. I don't like the grid here, it's disturbing. So if you want to get rid of it, go to filter and untick work plane. After that, I like to throw in a displacer modifier to modify the terrain. Select the plane and hold down the shift key to apply directly the modifier to the selected shape. Go to the modifiers and choose displacer here. Now let's displace the terrain using a gradient. Go to the Shading tab shader, Gradient. To see better what we do, let's increase the strength of the displacer. You can either use this little yellow dot and drag it up, or you can go to Object and increase the height value here. I prefer to change the strength here. Now we can modify the gradient. What I like to do is to drag the black knot here in the middle and duplicate the white one and drag it to the left. That way you have a sort of concave ground. Let's add some turbulence to have more detailed and interesting soil here. If you don't like it, you can modify the seed here. You can change the level of details here with the octaves. With the scale, you can change the size of the noise that is created within your gradient. You can also change the angle of your gradient. You can see that we have some issue here at the edges of the plane. To fix that, simply tick the absolute box here. That's only one gradient. You can change the type here. For instance, 2D circular is really good to make island, for example. You can explore to see what you like, and also don't hesitate to modify your gradient up here as well. Let's stick with the normal 2D U. Let's run Octane. Go to Setting, change Direct Lightning to Path Tracing, make max samples to 200, the GI clamp to 1 and tick the adaptive sampling here. These are a personal settings, but you can work with what's best for you. Let's add this material I have from RD Textures. I think now RD Textures is part of the Quixel Megascans library. This texture is really detailed, really great for terrain. Go to the texture tag. Make the projection cubic. And increase the length to 250%. Next, put a sunlight. I have it here just next to my camera icon, but you can find it here under Objects, Lights, Octane, Daylights. Hit R to rotate the sun and find a good spot. Usually on the side is always good. Next, I will show you how I use the scatter system with Octane. Here I have this grass. It's from Quixel. Be careful before exporting it inside Cinema 4D. In the render settings here, you have to change the renderer from standard to Octane. That way your grass texture or whatever you import from Quixel will be converted to Octane texture. And also to optimize the better your scene, don't export your grass as a 4K texture, but more as a 2K texture. If you can, 1K is even better. Depending on the asset you are exporting or where the object will be in your scene, you will change the resolution of your textures. Now let's add an octane scatter. I have it here, but you can find it under objects, octane scatter. Take all the grass models here and put them behind the scatter system. Click on your scatter and change the type to surface. Drag your terrain on the surface slot. And there you have your grass scattered on your terrain. What we can do in the parameters is to increase the count here. So we have grass everywhere. As you can see here on my Cinema 4D viewport, the grass isn't straight. So to fix that, we can drag the normal align slider to the left. Maybe not all the way, so we have more variations. As you can see, we still have our original grass models here. So let's take them and put them down so that they're no longer in our field of vision. This looks very uniform now. We need to bring some variation to our grass. To do so, let's grab a random effector that will randomize the scale and rotation of our grass here. Find it under MoGraph Effector Random. Nothing changed, so we need to apply it to our scatter. To do so, click on U Scatter Effectors and drag the random effector. 
Now you see that the grass is floating in the air. Let's take a look at our effector. If we go to parameter, we see that the position has been tick. We don't need the grass to move, so untick that. We need rotation to be randomized, so tick it. I know that we need rotation on the heading here, so let's take this up to a large value. Anything beyond 360 will work. There we go. That's broken up a lot of those patterns that we saw. We can also change the scale here. Tick that uniform scale and put 0.35 so we have variation with the scale of our grass models here. What we can do as well is to add variation in the color. So for that we need to alter the grass material. I'm not going to do it here, but I have another video that you can click up here where I explain how you can randomize the color of your grass material. I think the grass is a bit too big and I want more patches of grass. To do so we can add a noise here on the scale parameters, now add a noise on the shader. Now you see that the pattern of the grass has changed. It's now driven by this noise. We can modify the noise as we like. So you can change the contrast to have more pronounce patches. Change the global scale to make your noise larger, etc. Play with the value of your noise to match what you want. Next, I want to show you how you can art direct, where do you want some elements, and how you can control better the placement of these elements. Here, I have some tree models that I'm going to scatter on my terrain. Let's put them out of our view. So let's put our trees on a new octane scatter. Put the type to surface. Add your terrain as the surface and add the same random effector as the grass. Don't forget to put the normal align slider to zero. Now you see that there are way too many trees. We can decrease the number here. To control where the trees are going to be, I'm going to introduce a plane effector. Let's go under MoGraph effector, plane. Add the plane effector to our tree scatter. In the plane effector parameter, untick the position, tick the scale, tick uniform scale, and put minus one. Now we don't have trees anymore. To have them back, let's add a field here in the fields tab. So the field that I like to control the trees is the spherical field. Now wherever I place my field, there won't be any trees. We can also reduce the inner offset of our field here, so the fall off won't be that important. We can now add some more field here, so let's add one more spherical field and don't forget to change the blending mode to add so it affects our scene. That's it for this video, just to point out that this is just one way of working, and there are as many as there are users. You can also start your scenes in the same way, but then add elements you like to bring more life to your visuals. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you have learned something today and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you on the next video.